President Obama has used this setting at the foot of the Tappan Zee Bridge and the construction for its replacement to push for his new $302 billion uh, transportation bill that's lying in Congress now. Please welcome Chris Horton. Good afternoon. It is my honor to welcome Governor Cuomo and President Obama to the site of the new New York Bridge. My name is Christopher Horton. I'm a native New Yorker born in Mount Kisco, raised in Peekskill, where I currently live with my wife, Maureen, and two children, Brandon and Brianna. For the past 15 months, I have served as the operating engineer in charge for the new New York Bridge, supervising all operating engineers running the machinery on this site. That means I oversee every man and woman operating a piece of machinery on this site. Everything from cranes and tugs to crew boats and road work machinery. In April 2013, I moved back to Peekskill from Fishkill because I wanted to help build this new bridge, a project that is employing New Yorkers, investing in local businesses, and giving back to the community that my wife and I grew up in, and that my parents still live in to this day. This community has been waiting for a new bridge to replace the Tappan Zee for more than 20 years and no one thought we would see the day that this project actually came into fruition. But as you can see for yourself, there are cranes in the air, barges in the water. In fact, we have seen consistent progress on this site almost every day since Governor Cuomo took office. Our governor, together with the president, has been able to accomplish more in three and a half years than anyone else in the last two decades. He broke through gridlock. He broke through gridlock that plagued this project for decades and worked with Washington to give the funding we needed to proceed full steam ahead. And it is thanks to the commitment and perseverance of Governor Cuomo and President Obama that there is a renewed sense of pride in this community because we know we are building more than a new bridge. We are building a monument to New York's innovation and America's determination. This will be a bridge inspired by New Yorkers, built by New Yorkers, and used by visitors across the nation and around the world. It is now my privilege to introduce the governor of the great state of New York, Mario, I'm sorry, Andrew Cuomo. Uh, I did so good right up to the end. <laughs> it's an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, Westchester. First to Chris Horton, it is an honor to be confused with Mario Cuomo. Let me tell you that, Chris. Let's give a big thank you to Chris Horton and all his colleagues who are doing a fantastic job for us. I have been out there uh, during the winter months when they've been working on this bridge, and I can tell you those are really rough and tough conditions. Uh, and they're doing a great job. They're on time, they're on budget. So let's give them another round of applause. Good afternoon to all of you and welcome Mr. President to the great state of New York. And let's give the president a great New York welcome. Behind me is the Tappan Zee Bridge, which was built in 1952 intended to be a temporary bridge at the time. 
Today, over 140,000 vehicles go over the Tappan Zee Bridge, which is more than twice the capacity and design of the bridge. It has been outdated, it's been unsafe, it's been in need of repair for many, many years. The state has said on many occasions that the bridge had to be replaced. In fact, we spent $80 million and 10 years talking about replacing the bridge. But we just couldn't get it done. It was seemingly too complex, it was too big. We couldn't even get it started. To me, it was a metaphor for what, it, what had happened to our state. Political gridlock, government paralysis, fear and indecision had taken control. But that, my friends, is not the New York way. We are the state of the bold, we are the state of the daring, we are the state of performance, we are the state of skyscrapers, of intricate transit systems. We are the state of public works that challenge the imagination. Just 120 miles north of here, straight up the Hudson River, you'll find the Erie Canal. The Erie Canal was one of the most ambitious public works in the nation at the time. People said it couldn't be done. The governor was DeWitt Clinton who set out to build the Erie Canal. Thomas Jefferson said the governor was mad, literally, to think that he could build the canal 350 miles through the wilderness. Well, we built the Erie Canal, we built it on time, we built it on budget, and the rest is history. It opened up upstate New York and it opened up the West to the nation. That was New York ingenuity, and that was New York hard work. In that spirit, October 2011, we moved forward with our new bridge. We said we were done talking, and we were done procrastinating. We forged new partnerships. We challenged ourselves to do it faster and better than ever before. We're using a new development method that combines the design and construction phases in one step, saving time and saving money over one billion dollars saved from the original estimate by this new construction method. The federal, agree the federal government agreed to fast track the project and DOD and DOT exceeded all expectations in making government perform. I was saying to Secretary Fox on the way up, it is incredible how quickly this federal government moved and moved this complex project. And let's give Secretary Fox a round of applause. <laughs> the United States Department of Transportation provided unprecedented financial support, the largest loan ever awarded under the Transportation Infrastructure and Innovation Act 1.6 billion dollars. Thank you very much. And we owe a special debt of gratitude to our champion in securing that loan, our Congresswoman Nita Lowy. Let's give her a round of applause. I want to thank the New York State Legislature and many of my colleagues are here today. Both houses and both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republicans. I want to thank them for breaking the political gridlock that long paralyzed this state. We just passed our fourth on-time budget in a row, not done for 40 years. And we approved this project in record time. This bridge will create tens of thousands of jobs. It will speed commutation, it will increase safety, it will open the region to new growth like never before. But Mr. President, we want you to know that to New York, we are not just building a bridge from Rockland to Westchester. This is a bridge that symbolizes what was and what can be. This is a bridge from gridlock to bipartisanship. This is a bridge from paralysis to progress. And this is a bridge from yesterday to tomorrow. And Mr. President, 
we owe you a debt of gratitude because without your leadership and without the assistance of the federal government, we would not be building this bridge today, period. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a big welcome to the President of the United States, Barack Obama. Hello, New York. Hey. Hello, New York. It turned out to be a beautiful day. Well, it's wonderful to be here with all of you. Take a seat, take a seat, relax. First of all, I want to thank Governor Cuomo for that great introduction and the great job he's doing. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mayor Fixell for having me in Terrytown. Where's the mayor? Where'd he go? There he is, right there. This is a gorgeous part of the world, and I am lucky to be here and I'm going to be coming back soon. In two weeks I've got the honor of delivering the commencement at West Point, just a little bit further up. But today uh, I'm here along with our Secretary of Transportation, Anthony Fox, to talk about one of the best ways to create new jobs and spur our economy and that is to rebuild America's infrastructure. You know, it's been about five and a half years since the financial crisis that rocked Wall Street and then ultimately spread to Main Street. Thanks to the grit, the determination of the American people, we've been steadily fighting our way back. In just four years, our businesses have now created 9.2 million new jobs. Auto industry that was flatlining is now booming. A manufacturing sector that had lost a third of its jobs back in the 90s is adding jobs for the first time. Troops that are fighting two wars, they're either home or coming home. Rather than creating jobs in other countries, more and more companies are recognizing it makes good business sense to locate right here in the United States of America with outstanding American workers. So we've made progress, but here's the thing, we could be doing a lot more. We could make the decision easier for businesses to locate here in the United States, here in New York State, if we do a better job rebuilding our roads, rebuilding our bridges, upgrading our ports, unclogging commute times. The alternative is to do nothing and watch businesses go to places that have outstanding infrastructure. Now behind me is the old Tappan Sea Bridge, longest bridge in New York and one of the busiest bridges around. As any commuter will tell you, it is crowded. It carries a lot more traffic than when it was built back in 1955. At times you can see the river through the cracks in the pavement. Now, I'm not an engineer, but I figure that's not good. <laughs> but right now, thanks to the efforts of Governor Cuomo, thanks to your outstanding congressional delegation led by Nita Lowy and including Elliot Engel and Sean Patrick Maloney and Jerry Nadler, all of whom are here today. Stand up, congressional delegation. We're proud of you. Thanks to their outstanding efforts, workers are building a replacement, the first new bridge in New York in 50 years. It's called the New New York Bridge, which is fine as a name, but for your next bridge, you should come up with something a little more fresh. <laughs> uh, here, here's the thing. Now, this never happens. You are building this bridge ahead of schedule. Three years ago, uh, after Republicans in Congress refused to pass multiple bills that would have put construction workers back to work, I took action on my own to fast track the permitting process for major projects like this one. Normally it would have taken three to five years to permit this bridge. We did it in a year and a half. In a year and a half.
That meant we were creating thousands of jobs faster while doing right by workers and tending to the environment. And Vice Presidents in Cleveland today had another project that we fast-tracked, a rapid transit station that will make life easier for a lot of residents there. So today we're releasing a new plan to apply the same strategy to other major projects all across America. We're announcing 11 more projects to accelerate. We're cutting bureaucratic red tape that stalls good projects from breaking ground. We're launching a new national permitting center to implement these reforms. We are aiming to put every major infrastructure project on a, on a public dashboard so everybody can go online, track our progress, hold us accountable, make sure things are coming in on time, on budget. Make sure your taxpayer money is being used well, but also make sure that we're putting folks back to work rebuilding America. That's our goal. Now, all these steps we can do without Congress. And all these steps mean more good jobs, because nobody was hurt worse than construction workers by the financial crisis. The housing market plummeted. And a lot of guys in hard hats and a lot of gals in hard hats, suddenly they were off the job. And that's why the Recovery Act, back in 2009, 2010, included the most important public works jobs program since the New Deal jump-starting more than 15,000 construction projects around the country. Over the past five years, American workers have repaired or replaced more than 20,000 bridges, improved more than 350,000 miles of American roads. Four years ago, when we were just starting to clear away the damage from the financial crisis, the unemployment rate for construction workers stood at 20 percent. In fact, it was over 20 percent. Today, we've cut it by more than half. But we can do better. We can build better and we have to. We've got ports that aren't ready for the next generation of cargo ships. We've got more than 100,000 bridges that are old enough to qualify for Medicare. We've got leaky pipes that lose billions of gallons of drinking water every single day, even as we've got a severe drought in much of the West. Nearly half our people don't have access to transit at all. And I don't have to tell you what some of our airports look like. Building a world-class transportation system is one of the reasons America became an economic superpower in the first place. But over the past 50 years, as a share of our economy, our investment in transportation has shrunk by 50 percent. Think about that. Our investment in transportation has been cut by half. You know what other countries are doing? European countries now invest twice as much as we do. China invests four times as much as we do in transportation. One study recently found that over time we've fallen to 19th place when it comes to the quality of our infrastructure. 19th place. I don't know about you, but I, I don't like America being 19th. I don't like America being second. I want us to be first when it comes to infrastructure around the world because businesses are going to come where there's good infrastructure to move businesses move people, move services. My favorite president happens to have been a Republican, a guy named Abraham Lincoln in my home state of Illinois. And it was Lincoln who committed to a railroad connecting east to west, even while he was struggling mightily to hold together north and south. It was a Republican, Dwight Eisenhower, who built the interstate highway system. It was Ronald Reagan who said that rebuilding our infrastructure is an investment in tomorrow that we must make today. Since when are the Republicans in Congress against Ronald Reagan? But that's part of the problem. We've gotten so partisan, everything's becoming political. They're more interested in saying no because they're worried that maybe, you know, they'd have to be at a bill signing with me then they are actually doing a job that they know would be good for America. It's time for folks to stop <coughs> running around saying what's wrong with America. Roll up your sleeves and let's get to work <coughs> and help America rebuild. That's what we should be doing. We don't need a can't-do spirit. We need a can-do spirit. 
That's what Governor Cuomo has. And it sounds like the state legislature was willing to work with him on this. Well, we need the Congress to work with us on these issues. It doesn't mean they're going to agree with us on everything. I guarantee you they will have more than enough to disagree with me about. But let's not fight on something we all know makes sense. After all, we're the people who, in the depths of the Depression, lifted a great bridge in California and laid a great dam down in the Southwest and lifted up rural America. We shrank a sprawling continent when we pounded in that final railroad spike, connected up this amazing country of ours, stretched a network of highways all across America from coast to coast, and then we connected the world with our imaginations and the internet. A great nation does these things. A great nation doesn't say, no, we can't. It says, yes, we can. <coughs> so the bottom, bottom line, Terrytown, is America doesn't stand still. There's work to be done. There are workers ready to do it. Some of them are here, and they're already on the job doing the work. We're proud of them. There are people all across this country that are ready and eager to move this country forward. So I'm going to keep on fighting alongside all of you to make sure that we're doing everything we can to rebuild America, not just rebuild one bridge, but I want us to rebuild every bridge. I don't want us to just rebuild one school, I want us to rebuild every school that needs help. I want us to, most of all, most importantly, rebuild an economy where hard work is valued and responsibility is respected and rewarded and where opportunity is available not just to some but to every single hard working American. That's what I'm fighting for. I know that's what you care about. Thank you very much everybody. Good job workers. Look forward to seeing this bridge. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless America. Transportation Act, the $302 billion. Yeah. That, the that gets divvied up all around the country, though. Presumably would be, uh, that is yeah. correct. But, uh, but I think long-term stability is needed. So states, counties, et cetera, can start planning out their infrastructure needs. And, you know, you, but you've got every member of Congress who's going to try to divvy it up. But, it, you know, look, the Tappan Zee Bridge, I think it's an, a very important bridge. It's not a, a, a bridge between two counties. It's not only a New York regional bridge, it's a real national bridge because of all the goods and services. You get off that bridge, you go straight across to Connecticut. And so it's the gateway to the Northeast. Right? What am I? All right, that's it. You guys. Well, it was certainly wonderful to have the President of the United States and the Governor here at the site of the new New York Bridge Project. Uh, this project would not be where it is without the partnership and leadership of Governor Cuomo and President Obama. The two of them really broke more than a decade of gridlock on this project. It was talked about for more than a decade, but no progress was made. It was mired in government dysfunction and, and talk. Uh, and thanks to the two of them, it was put on a fast track for environmental review. This is really exciting. It's a historic day in, in Tarrytown, and I'm so thrilled that I got invited to um, at least shake the president's hand and hear him talk about the need for infrastructure. It's so important because the infrastructure in the country, the state, the county, and the local communities is crumbling, and we need to spend more money and allocate more resources for uh, we're building bridges, we're building, we're paving roads, and getting rid of the potholes. President Obama was right on. Uh, improving our infrastructure is the bridge to a better future for all of our citizens. The president should be out more and more explaining his message. When you hear it, you understand how right he is. It was great to be here. It was great to hear the president. 
so to a largely partisan cheering crowd, the president urged that Congress move forward on passing legislation to increase and improve transportation in the United States, infrastructure, bridges, roads, and such, all across the country. This is Bob Kennedy.